It's time for a fridge reorganization. Do you ever just open your fridge and look inside and feel totally lost? Confused, wondering why everything is all over the place, wondering how you could better organize things, and just feeling like the entire setup is not functional at all? That is how I used to feel before I reorganized my fridge and completely transformed it into fridge goals. I don't know where I got this inspiration, but I was one day thinking, I wanna see what someone's fridge looks like that just has everything pulled together. They got their life in order, they're organized, they've meal prepped, and their fridge is ready to go. So I went on Pinterest and I typed in fridge goals. I don't know where that word popped up either, but it came to me from the heavens. And I type in fridge goals and all of a sudden I see some beautiful fridges. Organized like crazy, things are in color order. Just seems like something that every morning or every evening when you open it would make you really happy and bring a lot of joy and I thought I want my fridge to make me happy and bring me a lot of joy and that shouldn't be too difficult to achieve right whenever I take on a project that is reorganization focused I always call hoarderly you might remember that I worked with them years back to reorganize my entire old apartment and I mean every single room so bedroom bathroom kitchen living space the whole shebang and more recently I did a video with them in this new apartment where I reorganized my entire kitchen right there and they helped me make the place sparkly beautiful organized labeled quarterly is just the best and the two owners Jamie and Philip are two of my really good friends so when I had this idea about fridge goals I immediately sent an email to Jamie and I asked her if she was interested in helping me out nobody knows how to organize things better than Jamie and Philip thankfully she was interested in working with me on this project so I collaborated with quarterly to make this dream come true so let me tell you what was wrong with my fridge to begin with when I opened it up I felt like things were just everywhere there's no rhyme or reason to why the carrots are over here, to why the greens would be over here, or the juices would be over here, or the milks would be over here. I just felt like looking in the fridge made my mind feel more chaotic. And I got a lot of craziness going on all day, so I don't need snack time to make me more stressed out. But it was, and I would open my fridge and I would stare, and I'd think, I don't know where anything is. I have a lot of stuff, but I don't know what is good and what has gone bad already. And it's not in an organized arrangement to help my brain come up with meal ideas. So now if I wanna whip something together with the ingredients I have, I really have to start digging. I have to lift things up, I have to check for expirations, and one of my goals has been to cook more foods at home because I tend to order in a lot and I feel like that would be a great way to save money and eat healthier things. But it's difficult to do that when you're just not prepared. Being prepared and being organized can help you achieve any single goal that you want to achieve. You'll notice in our fridge there was no meat and that's not because we don't eat meat. We actually do eat meat. We just rarely eat meat at home. Michael and I both don't like handling raw meat so if we do want to add some sort of protein to our dish, most of the time we'll go pick up the protein separately already already cooked and then we'll eat that with our vegetables. But our fridge is mostly vegetables. So when I finally decided to take the plunge and reorganize this entire space, the one thing that was very important to me was doing so in a sustainable and plastic-free way. I know that this entire idea of being sustainable and being package-free starts with the shopping process, so it really is about not buying things in plastic and starting to buy things in bulk or to refill things into a glass jar to begin with. But I'm gonna be honest, I just wasn't quite there yet, and we did have a few things in this fridge that we purchased in plastic because they were the easiest way to buy things. And from my perspective, undergoing this whole transformation is now gonna make it a lot easier to start buying things in glass or to now actually take the glass jars that we have, bring them to stores and buy things in bulk. And any transition to completely zero waste is gonna take some time and adjusting. And I'm absolutely not fully there yet, so I'm not plastic free, I'm not waste free, but I did want my fridge to be as sustainable as possible. The second thing that was really important to me here is that I want the fridge to be functional. So yes, I want it to have beauty. I want it to visually inspire me when I open the fridge. But above all, if it's not actually helping me achieve the goal of cooking more food at home, then it's not worth it at all. So instead, I came to the conclusion that I wanted to set my food up in my fridge in a way that's really conducive to cooking. And when I ask myself, what's the hardest part about cooking? It's the actual process of chopping and prepping. So my goal here was to put things into the fridge pre-chopped and pre-prepped, at least where possible, 
so that when it comes to actually roasting vegetables or making something, I can skip the entire step of chopping things up. We started out the way she always starts when organizing something, and that is pulling everything out to look at what you have. Sort of similar to when she was organizing my kitchen cabinets, she wanted to get a sense of how I used everything in the fridge. How often do I use chia seeds? Do I drink milk every day? I think similar to organizing a closet or any type of cabinet, it is important with your fridge to make sure that similar items or items that you use together are close together. And previously, my fridge was not like that. So that's what she was here to help. So with Jamie's help, I cleared everything out and then we went ahead and we cleaned all of the shelves of the fridge. A lot of times sauce can drip or just, it gets gross inside of a fridge. It's food and the food is going bad every single minute that it's sitting there. And if you don't clean your fridge regularly, I can promise you that opening it up is not gonna be a pleasant experience. So once we cleaned everything out, Jamie actually did this genius thing that I never thought of, which was to readjust the shelf heights. You can do this in most refrigerators and I just don't know why I didn't think to do this, but the bottom shelf, I thought it was too short to fit most things. So for instance, I was sticking my iced coffee carafe in the door because I didn't think it would fit on the bottom shelf and it kept hitting the middle shelf. But once she adjusted the height of that middle shelf, things fit perfectly on that bottom shelf. And same thing with the doors. All of the shelves could be adjusted and all of the heights could be changed. So then you don't have to worry about what fits where. Instead, you could put things where they're most functional. Since I wanted to do this in a sustainable and mostly plastic free way, I knew that I needed a lot of glassware. I did have some glasses at home, but I did want them to look uniform and to look nice. So I got a ton of glass jars from Package Free Shop. I ordered a couple of other things from them as well. Fabric produce bags, as well as silicone bags. And I'll show you how I use these a little further down the line, but the package free items were really great and I love the glass jars. They have a nice wide lip on the top, perfect for what I wanted to use them for. And then a lot of the other glassware that you're seeing kind of came from random places. I'll try to put links in the description box for some specific ones, like the jars that my sauces are in, the cute drink jugs that you're seeing with those really cute white silicone tops, as well as the other jars with that orange rubbery piece around the lip and then those snap-on clamps. So with my whole sustainability goal here, let me tell you what my thought process was. There are some items that I buy that come in plastic and it's really difficult to actually get them in the form that I want them, not in plastic. So because of that, you know, someone could say it's kind of counterintuitive that you're buying it in plastic and putting it in glass, like that's not really sustainable. If I buy something like a bundle of say peeled garlic that comes in a plastic container, I can choose to just put that plastic container right into my fridge as is, or I can do what I did, which is where I took all the cloves out and put them into glass. And my reason for doing that is that as soon as I transferred them, like the moment I purchased them and they went from the plastic into the glass, I remembered and it was top of mind for me to recycle the plastic that they came in. Whereas maybe if I would have just purchased them in plastic and then kept them in my fridge in plastic, somewhere down the line, they might have started to rot or get bad. And then at that point, I'm just a lot less likely to recycle the plastic packaging properly. And I think that goes for a lot of different things. So if you're one of those people who maybe buys lettuces in plastic packaging, Packaging, or if you bought a container of literally anything that came in plastic but you wanted to store it in your fridge, I would recommend transferring it immediately to a fully sealable airtight glass container. And that way you can go ahead and properly take care of that plastic that you purchased immediately. But I know for a lot of people out there, they're just not gonna stop buying some of the stuff that they buy in plastic. So I think a really decent solution is to at least set your fridge up in a way such that you are enticed to take things out of the plastic immediately and put them in the glass and that way you can at least be more responsible about how you recycle your plastic and more aware of the amount of plastic you're using. After we sorted everything out, Jamie took a little bit of time to sort of map things out in her head. So she wanted to see where things fit. She was testing jars in different areas. All the while we were chopping vegetables and transferring things into different containers. Another question that someone might have is why if you're purchasing something that's in glass, transfer it into another glass container? And that is a valid question because I did that with, for example, my pickles. And my reason for that is purely aesthetic. I didn't dispose of the glass jar that the pickles came in. I kept it and I cleaned it. I peeled the label off and then I set it in my counter for future use. But the only reason I wanted to do that is because I really want my pickles to be in a clear glass jar that resembles all of the other jars. I didn't want it to be in a jar with a green top because it looks different. But don't get me wrong, that pickle jar is not going in the trash. So I'm reusing it, I'm upcycling it. I will probably be using that for my iced coffee in the future. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love giant cups of iced coffee. 
So honestly, a pickle jar seems like the right size for me. And after Jamie took a little bit of time to map things out in her mind and make some changes, we finally had my finished fridge. So here is the before shot of my fridge, and then here is my final fridge goals fridge. So what you're seeing in the top of the fridge are some foods that I've pre-cooked. So I have quinoa in two containers, brown rice in two containers, and then a gluten-free chickpea pasta. That food is all prepped and now it's really easy for me to just reheat it either on the stovetop or in the microwave or just eat it cold. Things like rice can sometimes take 45 minutes to cook, so I'm more likely to eat it if it's pre-prepped and in my fridge. A little bit further to the right are some of the fermented foods that I love. So you're seeing a lot of sauerkrauts as well as my pickles and olives. And in the middle on the top shelf, there's pre-chopped onion. In the back is purple onion and the front is yellow onion, as well as those pre-peeled cloves of garlic that I can now easily dice up to put in anything or even just roast whole. In the middle left, you're seeing some Brazil nuts in one of those silicone bags from Package Free. Michael went on this kick where he bought Brazil nuts and he was trying to eat three Brazil nuts a day, so we keep those in the fridge and we snack on them occasionally. Just to the right of it, you're seeing almonds and then cashews, both soaking in water. And that's because my plan in the next couple of days is to make some fresh homemade almond milk and fresh cashew milk, and you gotta soak them before to do that properly. To the right of that, I have organic dates and then a big tub of yogurt and then organic eggs on the side. And then down below, this is where I put a lot of my pre-chopped veggies. So I've got a whole giant container of chopped up eggplant, some chopped peppers in all different colors, some sweet potatoes in the back, cucumbers, chopped up carrots in the back, and I did leave some carrots whole and I put them in a little bit of water, and same thing with the scallions. To the right on the bottom shelf, you're seeing a lot of our liquids. So I've got two little containers of almond milk, two larger containers of oat milk, our water filter, our coffee carafe, and then also a couple bottles of wine back there. And then in the two drawers right under the top, that's where we've put most of our fresh produce. So on the left side, you're seeing greens. I use that fabric bag from Package Free Shop to put our kale in. I put some extra sweet potatoes in the back, broccoli and ginger in two of the silicone bags, and some extra greens in some glass storage on the bottom. Then in the right drawer, I put a lot of my fruits, so lemons, oranges, apples, pears, as well as pre-cut up berries in glass storage. If we move on to the left door, at the very top, I have my butter dish. A little bit lower down, I have my apple cider vinegar, some organic and unsweetened applesauce and maple syrup. Also on that shelf on the very left is that biodegradable produce wash I told you about. And then on the very bottom left shelf, these are all my sauces. So I have tamari, some teriyaki, my favorite sauce, which is soy ve, and then also mustard and my capers. I'd say that left door is more of the savory door. The right door is a little bit sweeter. So on the top of the right door is where I have my chia seeds and my flax seeds, which I put in yogurts and smoothies. The middle shelf has a giant container of chocolate. I used to to keep this chocolate storage in the actual bars, but I decided to just break it up and put it in a sealed glass container. I have some more chocolate in the middle, and these are some chocolate hearts wrapped up in tin foil. And on the right side, I put my smart sweets, which are just my favorite candy ever. And on this lower shelf of the right door, you're seeing a lot of juices. So on the left is actually homemade apple cider that I made for an episode of Lucy for Hire. And then you're seeing ginger juice, some pomegranate blueberry juice, as well as a green juice that Michael and I made ourselves the other day. And don't be fooled by these white silicone tops. They look like maybe they're not keeping things fresh, but they are sealed on tightly. You can actually take the whole bottle and shake it and nothing spills anywhere. So that is our brand new fridge. And I know you probably wanna know, well, did it work? Is it functional? Is it helping? And the answer is yes. Majorly. So I actually have videos here of a couple of meals that we made pretty quickly after this fridge was done. And you can just see in these videos that I'm actually really easily prepping dinner for myself and prepping meals at home. And these pre-cut up veggies are working exactly the way we wanted them to. So the day after I shot this video, I made this for dinner, which included the pre-cooked kale that was actually stored behind the pasta on the top shelf of the fridge, the three different colors of pepper, and then our chopped up eggplant and yellow onion. I just took these jars out of the fridge, I unscrewed the top and dumped them into a sautéing pan, sautéed everything together, and dinner was served. 
And I've been doing the exact same thing for breakfast, for lunch, so really it has transformed the way I'm eating and the amount of times that I'm eating at home versus ordering something in from the outside world. I hope this video was entertaining and I hope it inspires you to make some changes to your fridge at home, even if that just means cleaning things out a little bit, getting rid of expired food, or just like wiping the shelves. But if you do decide to fully transform your fridge too to make things more sustainable and to make it so you cook more at home, let me know and please send me a picture on Instagram at Lucy B. Fink. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram because if you like videos like this, I'm pretty much always sharing behind the scenes content like this on my stories and in my feed posts. So go to at Lucy B. Fink and hit that follow button. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please subscribe right now and click on the little bell to be alerted when new videos go live. Oh, one other thing about Horderly, they're not just in New York, so they're now in New Jersey, Connecticut, Boston, and Southern California. I'm gonna put a link to their contact page in the box below, so if you wanna get in touch with Jamie and Philip and inquire about an upcoming project, they are all ears. And let me know what else you wanna see on my YouTube channel. I have some really fun content coming your way, so stay tuned. Bye, everyone.